Hi everyone, welcome to Court Farm Chickings. This is part five of the chicken keeping course. Um, this is a continuation on the last video on medical problems in birds, physical medical problems. Um, last video was about egg issues and the problems uh, the birds can get in, in laying eggs and troubles they have, so have a look at that one. Uh, this one's about the other end of the bird, the head, the crop, um, digestive issues that can happen um, with the way birds work. So we're going to be looking at sour crop, impacted crop and pendulous crop. Now the way a chicken eats is it's always looking for food as if it's starving and this is because the food doesn't go straight down into the stomach. So when a chicken eats it fills a crop up. Now a crop is a bit like you have on a hamster where they have the cheek pouches. It's, it's like a balloon, a sack in their neck that fills up all day long um, with, with whatever they pick up and it will sit there um, and at night when they go to roost that's when it then goes through the body and gets digested so in the morning your bird will be have a nice flat neck in the evening it will have a lump and that's the, the full crop I have done another video on that and what that looks like click the link be back here to have a look at, uh, at that, so don't panic, that's a completely normal uh, thing in a, in a bird going to bed, it will have this lump, which is its crop. So, you can have issues with this crop, um, and all of them can be treated, um, and, and they can also be prevented, and, and that's the important thing, you can prevent any issues. Um, so we're gonna go through them and have a look. So, the digestive system, as I said, is very different to any like mammal, or hu certainly us, humans. And because they don't have teeth, they just swallow everything whole. But they will also um, swallow things like pebbles, grit, shells, that kind of thing. And it all goes into this crop. And as the bird's moving around, it sort of mashes it like a, a, a pestle of mortar, grinds it all up, and then it allows it to go through. And uh, the things like the stones and things uh, will pass. Oyster shell and, and what have you, the, body, uh, the bird's body will extract the calcium from that. Uh, anything else will, will pass out from the bird. If your chickens free range or you have a, a large area for them, they will do this naturally. They will naturally pick up the things they need uh, to break down their food. Even if you're just feeding your birds on pellets, like layers of pellets, they still swallow them whole and they still need breaking breaking down. So you don't need the oyster shell for calcium if they're on layers pellet, but you do need something in there like a grit so that they can grind all this down. If, if um, they're, they're in the wild or free ranging, they will find this themselves. If you have them in a contained area, especially with in the UK at the moment, the avian influenza lockdowns, if you have them in a contained area or hard standing, you will have to provide something. Um, otherwise they will have issues, which is what we'll, we'll, we'll move on to. So as the crop fills up throughout the day, uh, you'll notice the lump sort of getting bigger. You probably won't see it under the feathers, but you'll notice it when you hold the bird. Um, in a minute, I'm going to go and get one of our birds and, and go through it on a practical thing and on, on how to clear one of the blockages that can happen. But I'll also show you on, on the neck there. So you'll notice it growing. And it should be firm, but not rock solid. should have a bit of give, a little bit like a stress ball, but it shouldn't be fluid and squidgy. Um, that, if, if it, either one of those can indicate a problem. So if it's rock hard, that's a, a blockage. If it's squidgy and fluid-like, um, then that's that's going to be your, your sour crop, sort of your symptom of that. So sour crop and impacted crop are two very different things, but they are related. So impacted crop is where your bird has eaten something that uh, it is compressed in, in the crop um, and it has blocked, so it now can't go through and it's eating more and more, more and more on top, and it's just getting more and more heavy, more and more dense, and it, and it can't get through. Sour crop is um, an infection, a bacterial infection. It's where what they've got in there ferments, and you, you will hear a gurgling in coming out the bird's beak, and you will smell that as well. It's, like a, it's almost like a, a beer, smell like a gone off beer if you've worked in a pub. When you're doing the drip trays, it's that kind of smell. It's a fermentation in, in that crop. And uh, they're both caused by different things, but a impacted crop can go on to develop sour crop. 
because what you've got in there isn't moving through, so it ferments and then you've got sauerkraut. So they could be together, but or you could have one or the other. So the, the treatments are, are, are different, but we'll go through them sort of one at a time. So the main causes of impacted crop is if your bird has eaten long fibrous material um, or foreign bodies, so bits of string, baler twine, uh, rubber bands, that kind of thing, all of that can do an impacted crop. Um, if they're eating grass naturally in their environment, it shouldn't cause it, but if, they're, if you let them out into a, a really overgrown area or very long grass, then that can happen. And this is why it's important never to mow your grass and then empty the, the, the shavings into their pen. Yes, they love scrabbling around in it, but if they eat it all, um, it, it's because it's been cut up by the mower, it's already sort of like releasing that grass smell and, 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 and things. And um, it really doesn't go well in the bird's digestion, um, having that amount of already cut grass. So don't put your grass trimmings in with your birds. Um, pendulous crop um, happens when you've had a impactation and it's lasted a long time or it keeps happening in the bird. And it's basically the same effect as like stretch marks on a human. So if you've been pregnant, it never quite goes back to how it was or you, you have that um, sort of a looser skin. Same as if you've put on a lot of weight or you're bodybuilding or something like that and very quickly expansion, the skin never quite goes back. And that's the same with the crop. So if it's stretched too much for too long, it never quite goes back. Now, the issue with that is every time the crop fills up, you, you you sort of end up with a shelf. Imagine like a balloon that's sort of half deflated and it's sort of hanging down. Um, and then, so it can then sort of block itself. Um, so if your chicken has a pendulous crop from having an issue in the past, you will have to sort of every day, um, when you're putting the birds to bed, sort of manually press all that crop up, make sure that it's not all, all, all stuck. And also in the morning as well, make sure that has emptied fully. Uh, pendulous crop is relatively rare. It only happens in birds that uh, keep having issues and that aren't addressed correctly. So if you look after your birds correctly, pendulous crop shouldn't appear. So on the impacted crop then, how do you treat and prevent it? So as I said, avoid the long cut fibrous class uh, grass so I said avoid uh, long fibrous cut plants like your grass um, and your haze. Yeah, obviously the birds do sleep on hay, but they don't generally eat it. Um, it but if you are putting them on hay, just make sure it, hay rather than straw. Straw it doesn't break down and it, it, if you twist it, it's very strong, whereas hay does break down a lot easier. Never put sand in. If they find sand naturally, if it's mixed in with your earth and that, that'll probably be fine. But never give your birds just pure sand. Um, sand will impact a crop very quickly. If they eat and ingest a load of sand in the crop <clears throat> uh, and then have a drink, uh, well, you've seen with like making a sand castle to make it firm and solid, you make it wet. Uh, and that will happen in the crop. So avoid large amounts of sand in your bird's environment. Um, and yet in, ensure the area is free of foreign objects, rubber bands, string, that type of thing, because uh, if they swallow it, it will go straight in the crop and, and block it. Always provide plenty of fresh water, that helps to flush these things through, keep everything liquid so it's not a dry mass, lots of water all the time, especially in, in the summer, it can be even worse because the foods they're eating will be dried out, they won't have as much uh, liquid from the greens. So they're eating dry food with not a lot of water. That can cause an impacted crop. And provide access to grit if need be, so that they can go in there and it rumbles around and it just breaks everything up for the bird. If the worst does happen, despite all your best efforts, because uh, chickens are chickens and they will find a way to hurt themselves, um, there are some ways that you can treat impacted crop. So take the bird away from any food for 24 hours. You don't, the, the bird will still eat because it's hungry. It's got lots of food in its body, but it's not in its stomach. So it will keep eating, um, which will make the problem a lot worse. So you need to remove it from food for 24 hours, even if you have to isolate that bird to do so. Vegetable oil in an eyedropper. So hold the bird's beak open and uh, don't spray because you could go down into the, the, the windpipe. Just offer that, just drop it into the bird's mouth. Don't spray it down the throat 
offer it onto the tongue, onto the into the beak, and let the bird naturally swallow it. That will help to lubricate and get things moving around, um, and massage at the same time. So over the course of 24 hours, you have to introduce this vegetable oil fairly often, sort of once an hour, whilst very gently, because it will hurt the bird, yeah, very gently squeezing that crop to get that oil in there, to loosen it up, loosen it up. And it's almost like a, a blocked drain. Um, you, it will build and build and build and build and build and build, build. And then just, you're just doing the same thing over and over with your plunger and then suddenly, whoof, and that is what will happen. It won't be that dramatic. <laughs> you won't go there and then I'm full of food. But um, that's the effect you're looking for with the impacted crop. If you do that for 24 hours and it's no different and it's no better and the bird is obviously in distress, then the only option is to cut the crop open and remove everything. Um, I wouldn't do that unless you're trained to do so uh, because you're, gonna, you're cutting open the bird and you're introducing bacteria and things and you need to also stitch that back up again. Um, so probably best for a vet unless you're trained in, in how to do that or confident in how to do that. The sour crop is, as I said earlier, it's the fermentation of things in their crop, which could be caused by impactation, but it could happen on its own within a 24 hour period. Again, especially in the hot weather, if the birds out laying in the sun, as we know they like to do, and it's got something in its crop it probably shouldn't have, or too much of a certain something, that can begin to uh, ferment um, and, and, and can literally uh, like brewing their own alcohol in their crop and you, you will smell it coming out of their mouth. They will be wobbly um, and they will be quite ill from it. it, they, they, it will be, it's like having a huge stomach ache. Um, they will know something's wrong. Um, but it can cause fungal infections and some quite nasty stuff. Uh, so you do need to treat it quite quickly. Um, so limit bread. Um, it, yeah, sort of man, well, all, all bread's man made, isn't it? But especially sugary loaves, I mean, cakes, that kind of thing. We all know we like to treat our birds, but uh, especially having a barbecue, like the hot dog buns fall on the floor, I'll chuck it to the chickens. That white bread that's full of sugars and things is really not good for their crops. Um, you could feed that kind of thing forever to your chicken, never have a problem. But it is that kind of thing that does cause this, so you need to be aware of it. Um, yeah, treat it as soon as you see it and don't allow the problem to get out of hand. Um, apple cider vinegar in the water um, is an antifungal, so it, it will sort of kill off the fermentation process. Fermentation is caused by bacteria um, feeding on the sugars that are in the crop. So by introducing something like an apple cider vinegar, it kills that bacteria off, uh, that fungus off and stops the process. If you have a severe case of sour crop and the um, the bird is very ill and it's you can hear gurgling and bubbling and, and the smell coming out of the beak, then you need to empty the bird's crop and then treat it. Um, otherwise, you're just putting treatment on top of a, a real problem. So I'm going to grab one of my birds now and show you how to do it. Uh, it's very very simple but there's a, a few bits you do need to remember, so and it's easier with a live bird, so I'm gonna go and grab one of the birds now and show you how to do that. Okay, so this is uh, one of our road rocks. This is Comet, this is from our personal flock. Um, so I'll use her to demonstrate. So the crop is here, so already I can feel she's been up, she's been eating, um, and you can see there, under the skin, let me get a bit closer. That's sort of squidgy, like a stress ball. It's not solid, it's not impacted. I, can, I mean, I can feel the individual sort of um, pellets and, and grains and things that she's been eating this morning. Now, if this was fermented, you'd have bubbling coming out of the beak here, um, and, and you'd have this sweet sort of beer smell, as I mentioned. Now, the way to clear the sauerkraut is you have to induce vomiting. So I'm gonna show you one comment how to do it, but I'm not going to be as vigorous because obviously I don't want her being sick. So the way you do it, you support the hen. You then force her down, force her head down. Um, and then as she's down, you massage that at the same time and push it up. So you might want someone else to sort of help you. So you hold the head down like this while supporting the bird and then you get 
massage this and push it. Now, obviously that won't work with a, a nice healthy crop because it's solid food, but it works when you've got the fermentation of the sauerkraut because it's liquid. The bird will throw that up, but it's important that when the bird's throwing up, you're not just continuing to hold it like that and forcing lots out because the bird now can't breathe. So you do a little bit, bring the bird up, let her breathe, go back down, do it again, do that three times. Um, and then put her back, otherwise it would be too distressing for her. It's not natural for birds to throw up. Do that three times a day. So force it out, bring her back, force it out, bring her back three times, but do the process three times as well. By the end of the third time, you should be now be getting nothing out, and that should be the crop cleared. The bird um, probably will be distressed at this, so to, to then make sure that that crop is clear of the infection or the fungus or bacteria that's been fermenting, don't just put her back and feed her some more food because you, you could reintroduce the problem. So apple cider vinegar in the water, um, like one cap per litre for her to drink to clear that through. You can introduce um, dried oregano that has natural antibodies and things in it and garlic as well. Well, don't eat the eggs if you fed garlic because your eggs will taste like garlic. Um, but it will really help clear that crop. Um, and plain yogurt as well. Now plain yogurt does work, but it's in recent years, laws and things with the BSC and that you shouldn't be feeding dairy to chickens if it's going through. So if, if you're selling your eggs or giving your eggs to people or eating your eggs, and you fed the bird yogurt, you shouldn't then be selling the eggs because you've got cross-contamination of animal byproducts. So if you have to do that, remove the bird's eggs from sale, get rid of them for at least seven days afterwards to ensure there's no cross-contamination of the dairy product in the egg. Strange laws, but there we are, okay? Right, I'll go and put her back and we'll carry on. Okay, obviously um, in doing that, you could create harm to the bird if um, the bird could choke so don't attempt it if you're not confident um, to deal with that if that occurs um, you, you, you need to be committed to it you can't panic halfway through and bring the bird up because it will all then go down into the esophagus and the bird could choke so if you're going to do it you need to commit to it um, and, and do it well if you're not confident then um, get a vet to do it um, I know I said in my previous video that vets aren't particularly helpful with chickens, but in, in a problem where you know what it is and you need to do a physical procedure like that, then a vet will be the best person to ask if you're not confident. Um, so I hope that's been helpful. Um, so that's the three things to look out for in crops. You've got the impactation, sour crop and pendulous, but pendulous only occurs if they've had a very bad case of impacted crop um, a, a few times. So that shouldn't happen. Um, so yeah, I hope this has been helpful. Um, we'll be going on to things like bumblefoot um, and, and, and that kind of uh, physical problem in, in the next video. So uh, we've been Court Farm Chickens, we'll see you on the next one.